Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the Fury Warrior on the Shadowlands beta. Fury Warrior is one of those DPS specs that feels very satisfying to play even early on in an expansion, so I typically like picking it up or trying it out as an alt. Um, and that is because Fury Warrior doesn't rely on secondary stats that you get from your gear as much as some of the other classes. So even in the very first tier, they typically feel very fluid and smooth to play. Uh, compared to some other classes that might feel a little so with that out of the way let's take a look at what actually changed for the fury warrior and i'll go over as much information as i can as well as provide some feedback on the gameplay first off let's look at the baseline abilities that have been added to the spec because fury probably got the most abilities added to its kit um pretty much we got the whole prot toolkit in fury so we get Challenging Shout, which is a 4 minute cooldown, and taunts all nearby enemies within 10 yards. Not very useful in general, but in a pinch, if your tank needs to drop Necrotic or something, you can taunt and leap away, uh, hopefully before you die. Then we also get Ignore Pain. So it costs 80 Rage and it's a 12 second cooldown. Generally, I'm not a huge fan of trading offensive capabilities for defensive ones um, like you do on DK when you death strike but in a pinch it might save you on some raid bosses where maybe the AoE hits for just a little bit more than your health pool. Uh, we also get shield block but it does require a shield to wear. It costs 30 rage, 15 second recharge, it has two charges um, and it works the same way as it does for prod. Raise your shield blocking all melee attacks against you for six seconds. Typically, you're not going to use this on a raid boss or mythic plus or whatever, uh, but in PvP against like double melee, it might be all right um, if you're like really in trouble. We also get shield slam. This is the offensive ability if you have a one hander and a shield equipped. 8.3 second cooldown, uh, scales with haste. Slams the target with your shield causing physical damage. Um, it's way too undertuned. I think to be used but I guess if you're already in defensive stance or in you know wearing a one-hander and a shield you might as well press it. Uh, we also had slam added to the toolkit 20 rage and it works the same way as it does for arms however it doesn't interact at all with the fury toolkit so I honestly don't really see situations where you would use slam over any other fury ability. Outside of that, some of the cool abilities that we got back that are now baseline are Spell Reflection, super useful on a lot of raid encounters and also in Mythic Plus and for PvP, don't even get me started, Spell Reflect is insane. We got Intervene, uh, 30 second cooldown, 25 yard range, run at high speed toward an ally intercepting all melee and ranged attacks against them for 6 seconds while they remain within 10 yards. Um, extra mobility and super good in PvP, so can't complain. Another big one is Shattering Throw, 3 minute cooldown, 1.5 second cast, roll your weapon at enemy causing physical damage, ignoring armor and removing any magical immunities, deals up to 500% increased damage to absorb shields. So not all that useful in PvE, um, except for like super niche situations, but obviously very good PvP ability. None of these abilities are new in general, but they have made a return from the past and I'm happy to see all of them added. Uh, some of the prot ones are questionable and slam is questionable but outside of that i'm happy with everything they've added back to the spec another change that they made to fury in general is the return of single-minded fury which allows you to dual wield one-handed weapons this was a thing in the past um and it's made a return i think right now it's strictly worse to dual wield one-handed weapon than two-handed weapons but maybe they'll tune it to be exactly the same and it's just going to be a flavor uh, change depending on what you want to play with. Next let's take a look at what's changed as far as baseline abilities. Enrage has been nerfed from getting 25% bonus haste down to 15 so this just slows down fury a little bit. Bloodthirst healing got slightly nerfed from 5% uh, down to 3% so this mostly affects us in PvP not so much in PvE. Rampage Cost has been reduced from 85 rage down to 80 rage. I think in general this is just a good change. Uh, recklessness duration got increased from 10 seconds to 12 seconds, so your rec is a little bit longer. Overall, good change. It just makes um, your opener and every time you have rec up feel a little bit smoother. Rallying Cry got buffed from 15% health 
up to 20% bonus health. So that's just a good buff to our raid utility. Um, and then, like I said, Single-Minded Fury has made a return. Next, let's look at the talents, because this is really where Fury has had a ton of changes and a huge overhaul. From BFA, we had four talents completely removed from the game. We have Furious Slash, Carnage, Inner Rage, and Endless Rage have all been completely removed. We've also had a lot of talents be changed. In the first row, we had Fresh Meat reworked slightly. Uh, it no longer increases your healing, but instead it will guarantee an Enrage whenever you hit a target with Bloodthirst for the first time. Um, and also you have a 15% chance to trigger Enrage. Then in the second tier, Impending Victory was slightly buffed. Uh, this was a talent that you pretty much never took. Um, so they're just trying to make it a little bit more enticing to use. It will now heal you for 30% of your maximum health instead of 20. Then in tier 3, Massacre um, also reduces the cooldown of your Execute by 1.5 seconds. And this also works with the Ventir ability called Condemn that I will talk about later. Then the second talent in this tier, Frenzy, has also been changed. Um, it's no longer an attack. Instead, it will trigger every time you cast a Rampage. So this talent might be okay on like pure single target, but the fact that it resets your bonus every time you attack something else still makes it kind of a questionable talent for like general use. Then Onslaught is a new talent. Um, it's a button that you press whenever you're enraged. Now this will just depend on the tuning, whether Massacre or Onslaught ends up being better. Massacre obviously has a really good interaction with Condemn, but outside of that, um, it might be the case where we will take Onslaught. In Tier 4, nothing has been changed. In Tier 5, all three of these have been changed. Seed now increases your Bloodthirst Rage Generation when it crits your primary target. Rotting Berserker got reworked and it now has a chance to refund Rage, 20% to refund 40 Rage every time you cast Rampage. Cruelty also got changed. Your Raging Blow will deal extra damage and has a chance to reset uh, when you're enraged. Then in the next tier, Meat Cleaver got changed to now cause your next four attacks to cleave two targets whenever you use Whirlwind. Um, so you have to press Whirlwind a lot less often on AoE. Dragon Roar got buffed. It will now deal triple its damage when it crits rather than double its damage. Then in the last row, Reckless Abandon has been changed. It generates 20 Rage and it improves your Bloodthirst to also gain the Bloodbath effect. And it improves your Raging Blow to gain the Crushing Blow effect during Recklessness. Overall, out of the classes that I've looked so far, Fury has had the most changes to its talent tree. Um, and especially a lot of changes to so-called meta talents that were often taken in BFA. So it's interesting to see this rework. Um, I've played with it a little bit, and to me, Fury feels super smooth to play. Um, I've been told that a lot of the talent combinations are still a little bit buggy, so I've just been sticking to what's been recommended to me. But Fury still feels very fast-paced. They try to slow it down just a little bit, because especially towards the end of an expansion, when you have insanely high secondary stats, Fury was hard to keep up with. Um, it was probably the spammiest class where you were pressing global cooldown so fast and often you ended up messing things up just because you can't keep up with how fast Fury plays. So seeing it get slowed down a little bit but still feel like a fast-paced spec that has something to press every single global cooldown um, is pretty interesting and I've enjoyed playing it so far. Next, let's take a look at the legendaries, and I will only cover the ones that I think show some promise for either Mythic Plus or Raiding. First one being Deathmaker. Your Rampage has a 25% chance to apply Siege Breaker effect to your target for 5 seconds. The thing with this is that each of your Rampage hits have a chance to apply this and it stacks. So this means that each of your 4 hits has a, have a 25% chance of applying the Siege Breaker effect. This means that sometimes you will get 15, even 20 second Siege Breakers on your target. Next we have Signet of Tormented Kings. Activating Bladestorm, Recklessness, or Avatar randomly casts one of the other two abilities 
and reduced effectiveness. So this one is kind of interesting. It's mostly good for like burst AoE, um, not as much for single target or like extended AoE, but especially low keys from what I've been told, this one is really good when paired with the Bladestorm talent because you will just get basically way more cooldowns in overall. And it also makes Fury a little bit burstier and have more upfront damage. Next one we have is a defensive one, but it's shown a lot of promise in both Mythic Plus and in Raiding, and that's Misshape and Mirror. Spell Reflection lasts 200% longer and applies to your entire party. So there's quite a few dungeons where Spell Reflecting abilities ends up gaining you a bunch of damage. It might not be tracked on like the damage meter, but in practice it ends up being very, very useful. Um, and also there are raid encounters where mechanics can be mitigated by this, uh, essentially allowing your party to have a pseudo cloak of shadows that enables you to clear like traps or anything along those lines. Next for the conduits, and I will only talk about the spec specific potency conduits. First up, we have Ashen Juggernaut. Execute increases the critical strike of Execute by 3% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 3 or 6 times. And the amount of times it stacks up does scale with the conduit rank. So this is similar to the Juggernaut talent or artifact trait that we used to have back in Legion, essentially ramping up your Execute and making it much stronger once you've been in Execute for a little bit. Then we have Vicious Contempt. Bloodthirst deals 40% increased damage to enemies who are below 20% health. Another Execute Conduit. Um, overall, it's just going to come down to tuning. And if Bloodthirst deals a fairly significant amount of our damage, then it's going to be good. If it doesn't, then it won't be that great. Then we have Hack and Slash. Rampage has a 10% chance to refund the charge of Raging Blow. That's actually pretty decent outside of um, Execute range, where Execute is helping you out with Rage Gen. So above the Execute threshold, pretty much Raging Blow is our filler and just getting resets on it whenever you Rampage is pretty nice. The sad thing is that during the times where you're Rampaging the most, so inside your Recklessness, you typically don't get to use all of your Raging Blow charges anyway, so getting uh, resets on it is not that beneficial. And the last one we have is Depths of Insanity. Recklessness lasts 20% longer, and again, that does scale with Conduit Rank. So having a longer rec is always nice because you're just able to get more Rampages out during it. Um, overall, I think the Conduits are fairly boring, but it seems like for more, most specs, Conduits don't only make a big gameplay change. You're just going to choose Conduits based on ability tuning, pretty much. So next, let's take a look at the Covenant abilities. For the Kyrian, we have the Spear of Bastion, 25 yard range, 1 minute cooldown. Throw a Kyrian Spear at the target location, dealing arcane damage instantly, an additional uh, amount of damage over 4 seconds, deals reduced damage beyond 5 targets. Enemies hit are tethered to the Spear of Bastion's location for the duration, and it generates 25 rage. Um, so this one got nerfed in the most recent build, and it was really the only contender with the Ventier one. So for AoE, it might still be better, but in general for raid encounters, um, I think Ventier will still be better. But overall, interesting, uh, provides a lot of control, so this shows a lot of potential for Mythic+. Plus. Next for Ventier, we have Condemn. It's a passive effect. Learn Condemn, replacing Execute. Condemn deals shadow damage. Can be used on enemies who are above 80% health or below 20% health. And weakens the target, preventing some of the damage they would deal to you. So this ability is super strong. And it makes your opener feel a lot smoother. Uh, that's typically where you're looking to generate the most rage. And more often than not, you also bloodlust with opener. So having execute um, essentially for your opener is a really nice change to have. Next we have Conqueror's Banner. It's a 3 minute cooldown. Plant the Conqueror's Banner in the ground granting 20% maximum health and 10% critical strike chance to you and to allies within 15 yards of the banner for 20 seconds. 
While active, spending 30 Rage and killing enemies grants you Glory. Glory increases your critical strike damage by 1% per stack up to 30 seconds um, or 30%. This ability is fairly annoying to use. It seems like they also are tuning it to be competitive by providing everyone else damage. So it's one of those weird things where you won't see the benefit of it on yourself, but your party will benefit from it. Um, in general, as a DPS, I typically don't like abilities like that just because I'm the DPS. I want to be doing the damage. Um, so overall, I don't think this will see too much use. Then for Night Fae, we have Ancient Aftershock, 1.5 minute cooldown. Unleash a wave of anima, dealing nature damage to up to five enemies and knocking them down for 1.5 seconds. The ground will continue to expel anima, dealing nature damage to up to five enemies and generating 16 rage per enemy over 12 seconds. Every three seconds, uh, targets are briefly knocked down. So again, this is kind of in contention uh, with the Spear of Bastion for Mythic Plus. Overall, it might be good just because it offers you some control, essentially giving you free interrupts, similarly how Earthquake does. And it also generates quite a bit of rage over its duration if you have uh, five enemies nearby. So while I don't think this will see much use in raiding, there might be some potential for it in Mythic Plus. All right, next let's talk about the gameplay. Um, first thing I want to mention is that I'm not a Fury Warrior connoisseur. Um, basically, I only learned this spec on the beta to try it out and see how I liked it. To me, Fury feels extremely fast-paced. For being the first tier, out of all the specs that I've played so far, Fury is definitely the fastest. Even with it getting slowed down slightly by the nerfs to Enrage and stuff like that, and some of the talent combinations, it still feels like the fastest-paced melee spec that I've played. Um, so if you like pressing a button on every single global cooldown and having you know no downtime at all, then Fury is the spec for you. I'm assuming they will do tuning, so I haven't really looked at the numbers, how much damage it's doing, um, you know, how ahead or behind other specs it is. The main thing I was concerned about is how it plays, how it feels to play. And honestly, if you played Fury before, it's going to feel very similar. Last time I played Fury Warrior was at the beginning of BFA, and this feels very similar to that. Um, obviously, they made some changes, some improvements, but in general, Fury gameplay hasn't really changed from its core. You still spam out buttons, you still try to get as many rampages as you can, and you still try to sit and enrage for as long as you can. So outside of that, Fury is very smooth to play. I like that they added a ton of utility to the spec through Spell Reflect, um, AoE Slow, Shattering Throw, things like that, Intervene. Those are super good changes. Um, the one thing that I don't like is the addition of the prod spells to the spec because honestly, outside of PvP, it feels just like you're going to have way too many keybinds, to be honest. Um, I would have much rather seen like a defensive ability added to the spec rather than adding ignore pain, shield block, um, shield slam, things like that. So. That's just me speaking from my experience with Fury. I know a lot of Fury players who played it back in like Cataclysm, for example, when you were able to swap between one-handed and shield and then, you know, the regular two-handed Fury or dual-wielding Fury. Do prefer having the option to equip a shield uh, mid-combat, but that's just not for me. It's something that gets solved by macros. And overall, I don't think it introduces too much to the spec that it didn't already have. Thank you so much for watching this video and please let me know in the comment section, what do you think about Fury Warrior? Obviously I'm very new to the spec, I haven't played it too much. So my opinion may be irrelevant, but I just gave feedback on how I would think Fury should play from playing it in the past a few times and I guess what the class fantasy is. But let me know, do you like the changes they made? Do you like the new talents? Um, you like the legendaries, what do you wish was still changed? Because today we did get the Shadowlands release date, so there's not much time to give any more feedback and for them to make changes. Um, but yeah, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.